You've been asked to give a wedding speech and you want it to be heartfelt and funny and amazing and you're putting the work in. I mean, you're on YouTube right now watching videos on how to give a great wedding speech. But I see people make the same five mistakes over and over again. I, I see it as a wedding speech writer and I see it as a wedding guest. And there's nothing worse than watching someone give a wedding speech and you know they've put a ton of time and effort into it and just watching it slowly nosedive. So here are the five wedding speech mistakes that it's so easy to avoid. First mistake, it's too long. Look, it's a speech, not a hostage situation. Keep it brief. Aim for about five minutes. Five minutes is about a page and a half to two pages double spaced. So as you're writing and you get your draft together, think about how much more you need once you hit two pages. Also, when people speak, they speak at about 150 words a minute. So times five, that's about 750 words. If you're working in Microsoft Word, you just go up to tools and you bring the thing down and you can do a word count. You can see where you are and divide that by 150 and you'll have a sense of how many minutes your speech is. So make sure after you've written your speech, you do some editing. As Stephen King calls it, kill your darlings. I mean, you know, you don't have to take his advice. What does he know about writing? So just make sure you trim the fat, make sure that everything you add tells us something new or tells us something in a different way. Don't make your speech too long. It's, it's diminishing returns for you because people will lose focus and they will get bored. And it's also kind of inconsiderate to the other people who are speaking. At most weddings, it's not just one person that speaks, right? So if you go up there and you give a speech that's 15 or 20 minutes, well, there's probably two, three, four more people who are gonna go up and give toasts and you've just burned the audience. That audience is over the speech portion of the evening. So. Don't let your speech be too long. The next thing, and I see this all the time, too many inside jokes. My rule of thumb is to always write for the plus one at the wedding. Like just came as somebody's date, doesn't know any of the people involved, doesn't know any of the situations, never seen any of these people before in their life. If that person can follow along, then you've got every single person on board. If you've got 200 people and only four, get the reference that you're making, well then, instead of having a possibility of 200 people laughing, you've only got a possibility of four people laughing. And a room sounds a lot better when it's everyone laughing. By inside jokes, I mean it could be initials for something or an acronym, you know, some jargon. And you don't have to take it out, all you have to do is explain it. If you're talking about the lake you went up to and you just call it Winnie Ha Ha, you know, and then we went to Winnie Ha Ha and people go, what? You can say, you know, Lake Winnie Ha Ha, it's the place where our family has gone every summer for 27 years. So just keep that kind of thing in mind. It's usually just a tiny bit of explanation that's going to make the difference between having 15 people who have the potential to laugh at the joke or to enjoy the story and a full 200. And it's way more fun for you. This next thing I see all the time when people send me a speech to audit or when I get on a Zoom with a client to do a speech review, they tell, but they don't show. They tell us, Tony is a great guy. Tony is really caring. Tony would do anything for anybody. Well, that's nice, but give us an example of Tony doing something. You know, did Tony help you move and it was five floors up and the elevator was broken? Those are also great opportunities for really organic comedy. So then you're not shoehorning in dumb jokes that you found on the internet. Yes, I know you're looking. I know that's what you hope this would be, just a whole list of jokes you could steal and put in. But making them yourself is better, just like food. If your daughter is the most determined person you've ever met, give us some examples. Give us an example of how determined she was when she was four years old and she wanted to learn how to ride her bike. And give us an example of how she really wanted to play on the varsity tennis team and she failed four of the auditions. Tryouts. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm not a sports person? I mean, if your best friend is a picky eater, tell us what he eats on a daily basis. If, if he doesn't like other people to touch his food, tell us exactly what happens when you reach over and try to steal some of his fries. Because details are funny and it's a great way to add humor without sounding like, whoa, this is a joke. I mean, how many times have you sat through a speech at a wedding and you hear that set up and you go, I know what the punchline is, don't be that person. The next mistake is kind of bad and I see it all the time. People forget to talk about the other half of the couple. 
They go the whole speech and they talk about their friend or their sibling or their child, like they're the second coming, and that's great. And then the only time you hear about the other half of the couple is in the toast. Let's give it up for Andrea and Charlie. And you go, so that's great that you love Charlie, but you haven't mentioned a single thing about Andrea in the entire speech. So find something nice to say about the other half of the couple. And it doesn't have to be a lot, but think of three adjectives. Think of three words. I'm so glad Charlie met Andrea. Andrea, you're blank and blank and blank. And I see the wonderful influence that you've had over Charlie over the past few years. And if you don't know the person, it's okay to be honest about that because it happens. You know, people move and they live different places. I haven't had a chance to get to know you the way I'd like to, but I'm looking forward to it. And you know, Charlie never stops telling me how great you are at this and all that. Sometimes your experience of that person is secondhand, but that's okay to talk about it as a secondhand experience. Even if you don't like the other half of the couple, you still have to say something about them. You don't have to say a lot, but you have to say something. And I have a lot of clients who come to me for help because they have no idea how they're going to write a great speech when they're not thrilled that the wedding is taking place, but the speeches come after the ceremony. So it's a done deal. Now you're thinking about the future, extend whatever kind of olive branch you can. You talk about your friend and then you turn to the spouse and go, you and I have never seen eye to eye, but the one thing we agree on is what a wonderful person the spouse is. That's all you have to do, take the high road. It's a nice thing and it is what you have in common. So don't forget the other half of the couple. A wedding is about two people, so make sure you talk about both halves of the couple. Finally, the easiest way to ruin your speech is to mention one of these five subjects. I call them the five Ps. Profanity, poop, projectile vomiting, past partners, and politics. Do you need profanity? I mean, grandma's there. Don't be stupid. Now, you wouldn't think that people would have to be told not to mention diarrhea in a wedding speech, but let's also be honest, diarrhea is hilarious. And you may have been drunk, you may have had been traveling with someone, and you may have a very good poop story. Well, wedding speeches are basically dinner theater. People are sitting at tables with food in front of them. There's other courses coming. You just don't want to be visualizing poop in any form while you're eating. And this advice is not just for the best men. I'm not picking on you. At my wedding, my dad gave a toast. And my dad mentioned a story when I was two years old and I said I had a present for him. And I reached into my diaper and pulled one out. So I, I beg of you, don't mention poop in your wedding speech. And look, if you really have to, like if there's a great story, if it's just the best story you have or the only story you have, use euphemisms. You can just say, you know, we went to Mexico and we were violently ill, or, well, we had the fish and that was a bad decision. So three days later, when we finally emerged from the hotel room, right? People will understand that terrible things were happening. And that brings me to my next subject, projectile vomiting. For the same reason you don't want to mention poop, you don't want to mention projectile vomiting. It makes people kind of turn off. And again, it goes back to, you want 200 people actively listening and 200 people enjoying your speech because the sound of 200 people enjoying your speech is amazing. Past partners, don't mention them. Don't mention exes. Don't mention how many morons your daughter brought home before she finally brought home this good one. Don't mention how many women the best man slept with. It just, it doesn't put, the subject of your speech in the best possible light, which is your job. And it doesn't put you in the best possible light because then people think he didn't need to mention that. Finally, politics. Look, I'm not telling you how to think. I'm just saying for this wedding speech, it's usually better left out. Even if you think you know your audience, I'm sure there are people there who hold different views than you do. And again, it all comes back to you want 200 people laughing. You want that sound. You don't want a hundred people laughing because half the room agrees with you and half the room doesn't. It just, it comes up and, and the room tightens and it sucks the fun out of it. And that's the last thing that you want to do in that moment. For more tips on writing a funny wedding speech, click here. And if you want my feedback on your speech, click here to go to my website and browse all my products and services. I'll stop doing that.